Hey LinkedIn, so today we're gonna talk about supervisory signals, what they are, how they're defined in code, um, how to test them, uh, and, and the criteria. I, you know, this is something that I've done a video on before. Uh, it continues to, to come up in, in discussions and questions on my LinkedIn, uh, as well as um, we're still experiencing it at some of our hospitals. So I decided to draw it all up on a board, teach, teach a few people here, and, and why not do a video at the same time? So uh, we're just gonna dig right. So uh, for those of you who are familiar, a lot of you probably know this as Joint Commission EC235 EP1. Um, for DNV, this will fall under your PE2 SR10 stuff. So supervisory signal. So first off, what are they? Well, a supervisory signal is a signal that indicates a need for action for a fire suppression system. There's uh, a few There's a few others in there as well, like guard tours and things like that, but we're gonna focus on fire suppression systems. So those are typically generated from a supervisory signal initiating device. That's a device that changes the state of a signal to an off normal condition, okay? So, but it's specifically related to fire protection or life safety systems. That is important, we're gonna come back to that, okay? So supervisory signal initiating devices. A few examples are, tamper switches, but those are semi-annual, so we're not gonna, we won't talk about those. Um, high or low air pressure switches, room or water temper sensors, or water level switches. There's a few others, but um, I, I specifically called uh, out, or wanted to identify the high air pressure switch as a supervisory is different than a high pressure type water flow device. So when your dry pipe system is filled with water, it triggers an alarm signal, which is a pressure type water flow device. That's different, okay? So understand understand that which ones are supervisory and which ones are alarm. Self-restoring versus latching. This is just an indication that um, some of those supervisory signal initiating devices, they can either be self-restoring like a, like a air pressure switch where when it hits a certain uh, low pressure, it, it triggers a supervisory signal, and when that pressure is restored, that signal goes away. You also have latching, which is it requires manual reset. So just something to, to understand. So what about initiating devices that are used for a specific purpose in code? So code allows us to have um, smoke detectors for closing doors, duct detectors for closing dampers, not necessarily, it's not required to trigger the fire alarm system it can trigger a supervisory signal at a constantly attended location. So, but what about those? So, well, NFPA 72 does clarify that for us. There's an actual code reference for you in the table. These are not supervisory devices. They just generate a supervisory signal. So they are tested at the same frequency annually as the devices that generate the signal. So smoke detectors are required to be tested annually. So the signal associated with it is required to be tested annually. Even though it produces a supervisory signal, it's not required to be tested quarterly. What about combination systems? I get this question a lot. So when a fire alarm system is tied to a non-fire alarm system, it generates what's called a combination system. Examples of this are security uh, panic buttons, nurse call code blue. Those are not fire protection life safety systems. I, give, I mean, I'm sure you're probably thinking code blue is not a life safety system. No, not from the, perf not from the perspective of, of what we talk about, life safety systems being fire, fire related, right? So when an FPA is talking about it, it doesn't cover code blue. So those are not required to be tested quarterly because those are convenience. They're not, remember we talked up here, specifically related to fire protection and life safety systems. That's why that's important, right? These are um, for convenience for the hospital for whatever purpose, going into um, expediting security, getting there, maybe it's monitored internally. Uh, you have a, a, a system or um, you're monitoring your fire alarm system continuously by an operator. Uh, so them being able to get in there and um, expedite getting people to the right location, right? So. And then supervisory signal initiation for sprinkler systems. NFPA 72 does not specifically spell out where supervisory signal initiating devices are required for sprinkler systems. This comes from other codes. So NFPA 101 and NFPA 20 um, are, will tell you. So you need to know when, when your system was installed 
and reference the appropriate code of what's required. Older systems, like one of our hospitals, is a, doesn't, it has a, a 40 year old electric fire pump. We don't have any supervisory signals on. We don't have running fire pump running, power failure, phase reversal. You'll also see some that do generator running, knowing that your fire pump's running on alternate power. Um, again, those aren't necessarily required, so you've got to go to the right code to figure out if they're supposed to be there or not. Uh, but if they are there, because it's a fire protection or life safety system, then it has to be tested quarterly. Same thing with other fire protection systems. There's uh, fire extinguisher electric monitoring, there's foam systems, there's um, uh, suppression systems, gaseous suppression systems. So um, knowing all those differences is, is just important uh, to know when are they required, when are they not. So hopefully this helps clarify some of the um, continued issues around supervisory signals and when they require testing and when they don't. Uh, feel free to hit me up uh, on and message me with any questions, any anything you guys want to 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 learn about. I'm happy to do the code research and and dig in and and get a video out there. So, all right, happy learning, everybody.